Hello friend. Good afternoon from Baghdad, Iraq. This is Khan Baba from Iraqi Dinar. Today we will discuss about BRIC summit. So let's start the today information. The leaders of the so-called BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa are gathering in Johannesburg this week in what is likely to be pivotal meeting for the bloc's trajectory. Russian President Vladimir Putin will not be attending due to an international criminal court warrant. But Moscow and Beijing will be pushing for the group's expansion in a bid to strengthen the bloc as an alternative to the U.S. led liberal international order. Over 40 countries have applied to join. But there is division within the five members. Brazil and India fear that expansion will dilute their influence and impact their non-aligned foreign policies. China and Russia, on the other hand, would like to position BRICS as a counterweight to the group of seven, G7, and other Western-led alignments. Although not formally on the agenda of the summit, de-dollarization is a priority issue for many BRICS countries and the dozens of other states in attendance. Some have suggested that BRICS establish its own currency to curb dependence on the US dollar. The BRICS bank already lends in Chinese yuan and announced yesterday that it would also do so in South African and Brazilian currencies. Why is this BRICS summit important and how does it figure into major geopolitical trends? Many around the world have their eyes on the ongoing BRICS summit in Johannesburg, in part because together the BRICS nations encompass a population of 3.5 billion, accounting for a substantial segment of global emerging markets. Originally, the countries came together as a grouping in the late 2000s to coalesce around issues of finance, development and trade. However, the bloc has now grown to symbolize one side of the ledger in a world of bitter strategic rivalry and growing multipolarity. In this narrative, the G7 advanced economies, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom and the United States, and the European Union, are on the opposing side. Although Brazil has taken issue with this anti-Western framing, great attention to the BRICS around the world has helped China and Russia's rhetorical campaign to pin the West against the rest. With Russia's illegal war of aggression raging in Ukraine and escalating tensions between China and the United States, countries are increasingly called on to take positions siding with one camp or the other. This is not, however, a repeat of the Cold War. So-called middle powers have a much greater share of overall global influence in today's international politics. The BRICS are often seen as a key space for such powers, particularly non-Western states in the global south. This BRICS summit comes amid a tumultuous, almost entropic period in international politics. Intensifying U.S.-China competition and Russia's illegal war on Ukraine have accentuated geopolitical trend lines. If there's a big takeaway for Washington, it should be that many countries, including traditional partners, are frustrated by the liberal international order and unsatisfied with post-Cold War unipolarity. The United States should take these concerns seriously and consider how to remake, or at least amend, the current multilateral order to address these frustrations and concerns, working with allies and partners to tackle the major challenges of the day. If not, other powers will step in likely in ways that do not advance U.S. interests.